This video was sponsored by JLC PCB. You may have seen my older video in which I made the Hades VR HMD PCB pretty much out of the stuff that was laying around in my home. It was a pretty cool little project that was simple to build and I had a lot of fun with it. It wasn't super well made, but overall it was working. The original Hades VR project was updated a lot since then, so I decided that now is the best time to revisit the project. All of the original files are easily accessible on the official GitHub page. You can find here all of the schematics, parts, software and stuff like that. Gerber files as well. I downloaded the original Gerber files for the basic HMD PCB and now I can order the brand new PCBs. To order the boards, you go to the JLC PCB website, click on add Gerber file and select the Gerber files from the GitHub. Wait a second for the file to upload and now you can see the board preview on the website. Here you can change all of the board parameters like thickness or solder mask color. Once you're happy with your changes, just click save to cart. Here you can select the shipping address and select the shipping method. After that select review before payment and submit order. The package as always arrived super quick. It was delivered directly to my house in under one week. As always the boards are packaged in nice blue box. I've ordered multiple designs, but each one of them was safely packaged. Here is the brand new original Hades VR HMD PCB. I've used the original Gerber files to make it. You can get the Gerber files at GitHub completely for free. The ports of course came vacuum sealed. This prevents any moisture from getting inside. As always, the boards look beautiful. I've got 5 pieces, so I have plenty of room for testing. As you can see, the original creator of the Hades PR, Liquid CGS, done a phenomenal job on the PCB design. It's super easy to assemble, since it uses only through-hole components. If you've seen my previous videos, then you already know that I use a lot of flags. This time however, since the board uses only through-hole components, you can solder each component without using flags. I found those gold pin sockets just laying around, so I might just as well use them. Of course I will have to remove any excess solder first. After the cleaning is done, I will add some flux to the PCB and attach the gold pin socket. The soldering isn't perfect this time, but it should work just fine. The gold pin socket is 2 pins too short however, so I will have to make those connections some other way. I found some more gold pin connectors that I can use for the gyroscope. To be honest, I don't really like how it looks. Now I will solder the RGB LED. This LED is used for the positional tracking. It goes right here. I've made it a bit longer in case I will have to correct the soldering. I'm not 100% sure of the LED polarity. So I found there is a small issue with the calibration button. My tact switch have the pins only on two sides. And the board uses the sides that I don't have the pins on. I easily fix it by just installing the tact switch upside down. And now it's time for the wireless modules. The board is made to use two pieces, but you should be able to use only one. The module goes right here. I've connected the wireless module using regular gold pins. It's a pretty solid connection. Turns out I don't have any capacitors in stock. I've tried looking for some spare ones in my garbage pile, but I didn't find anything. Thankfully I forgot that I just ordered a whole package. My capacitors are SMD, which means I had to slightly improvise. My voltage regulator is SMD as well, which means I will have to do the same thing as with the capacitors. It doesn't look too bad, it was super easy to solder. And of course my resistors are SMD as well, which once again means some improvisation. This time however, resistors are much smaller than capacitors, so it looks a bit funny. And now for the main part, the Arduino Pro Micro. It's the main microcontroller, which is responsible for all the parts communicating with each other. And it should go right here. I've decided to remove the gold pin sockets, as I think it was uh, just a stupid idea overall. I've decided to solder the Pro Micro directly to the board. So pretty much everything except the gyroscope is now soldered. I've saved the gyroscope for last, since it was being used in different projects. Also I will remove the gold pin sockets here as well. Just like with the Arduino Pro Micro, I've soldered the gyroscope directly to the board. 
It's my favorite way since I can easily desolder it later on. I've uploaded the Hades VR firmware, but for some reason the RGB LED is not powering on. I've decided to use the regular blue LED instead, which will be used for the positional tracking. I will attach it to the voltage pins of the optional wireless module. Ok, so in my infinite wisdom, I failed to notice that my walls are actually blue as well, <laughs> so the tracking won't really work. It seems I will have to use a different color LED, thankfully I have a whole bag of them. I've decided to use a regular white LED, I think it should work fine. The LED itself is super bright, which is great since the camera will see it better. Here you can see that the camera is actually tracking the LED. It's not perfect however, since it's missing a ping pong ball. And here you can see what it looks like in the simulation. I just want to say that it's actually supposed to work like that. I'm using only one camera right now, so that's what's causing it. And that's what it looks like inside the Steam VR. I also have the old Hades VR controllers, but for some reason it just doesn't work. It's a super old build, so that's most likely the case. Ok, so quick update. I actually found that I was using a wrong file for the HMD PCB. I've uploaded the new firmware and the tracking light is now fully working. It's now blinking since it requires calibration. I can't really do that since I've removed the gyroscope, but at least I can see that the firmware sees all of the other electronics. I've soldered back the gyroscope and now I can test it properly. But before I do that, let's see if the gyroscope is working. Here you can see that the gyroscope is recognized, but it requires the calibration. And now the calibration is finished. You only have to do it once. Just as I finished the calibration, the RGB LED started to work properly. The calibration button can be used to change the LED color. I've settled for the green, since it was working best with the color of my walls. Here you can see that the gyroscope is now working properly. The tracking is not enabled, but you don't need this for simple games like racing sims. I've designed a simple plastic frame, which will hold in place all of the electronics and will have a ping pong ball mounted on top. The installation is super simple. You just push all of the electronics inside the plastic case. There are also 4 mounting holes for the screws. I'm using simple M2 screws to hold everything together. Of course I also made a simple plastic cover for the back. Of course it wouldn't be complete without the front cover. And now the case is pretty much finished. However, it still needs a ping pong ball for the tracking. I will try to see if you can actually print one. So the ping pong ball is now ready, but it's super fragile. I don't think it's strong enough for it to work. It does however seem to work properly. I've slightly modified the plastic case, so now it includes the ping pong ball mount. I've also got a second camera for the tracking. It should now work way better. I also actually had to leave my house and buy real ping pong balls. I will make a small hole for the LED. The LED should go inside the ball and stop around in the middle. However, the hole seems a bit too small. I will make it slightly bigger. Now it should fit perfectly. The ping pong ball fits really well on the plastic case but it absolutely needs some kind of glue. The light diffraction is pretty good as well. I think it's actually better than the 3D printed one. I will use hot glue to secure the ball in place. And now it's pretty much finished. Let's see how it works with two cameras. This time I have two cameras for the positional tracking. The PS Move Service EX sees both of them, which means I should now get correct positional data. I have everything plugged in correctly, so let's see how it works. I've started by changing the HMD light to green one, since that's the color on the PCB. I've had to move the cameras under my desk since it's super sunny today. As you can see, the tracking is working perfectly. The movements inside the Steam VR may not be super noticeable, but that's because the cameras are not far enough from the headset. 
And that's pretty much all for today. As you can see, whole setup was super easy to do. I've had a lot of fun doing this. I've also started working on a real VR headset, which is of course based on the Hedis VR firmware. Thanks for watching everyone and hope to see you in the next video. And as always, huge thanks to my patrons.